Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, we're doing something a little bit different today. I know a lot of our fans actually watch Mother Trucker News as well. If you guys don't know Alex, he's really great in the industry. He's brought a lot of information for truckers to try to help truckers out and be profitable in their business. He has done a lot of interviews with many, many different truckers and other things out there, even big trucking companies. But what he hasn't done, at least not that I've seen, He's never sat down for an interview by somebody else. So we're going to flip the tables and we're going to ask the questions and we're going to let him answer about his story on where he got to where he is now. All right, Alex. So you came up from pretty, pretty small beginnings. Oh yeah. Still small. And, and I, and I've heard your story. I've watched your channel enough, but I know that not everybody knows. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so talk about how you got into trucking, how you made your decision to be there. Yeah, no. So basically the situation at hand was, you know, my uncle was a mover. Every summer, I would pretty much just go with him. He didn't pay me nothing, just wanted to spend some time with him. But he definitely made my life hell, where, you know, he was like, go to college, go to school, get an education, do not become a mover. So when I went with him, I did love it, but at times I was like, dang it, it's summertime, and now I gotta go with my uncle and move furniture, and moving furniture is like the worst thing for anybody, right? I mean, that's why you don't want to own a pickup truck because, you know, you don't want to help no friends move anything. But and just yeah. so the viewers know, that is how I found you. Because when I was searching channels, it was yeah. when my son and I were contracted with North American Van Lines. That's right. That's right. So I was trying to get information on North American, whether they were a good company to drive for or whatever. Right. We were contracted with Beltman. I know you were with a different actual carrier right. or a different brokerage, a different... Um, What's the word I'm looking for here? Agent. Yeah, I did a different agent, but same yeah. same carrier. Yeah. And uh, and and that's what attracted me to you. I saw the North American truck in one of your videos, yeah. and you were loading in the back and talking, and I was like, huh, this guy might be interesting to to, to listen to. And then I got sucked in, and years later, now here we are. Yeah, no, right. All right. We became Con friends. No. Yeah, continue with your story. Nah. So basically, you know, years go on, and I go to college, you know, thinking I'm gonna be a hot shot. Well, I come out. Best job I could get, you know, assistant manager at Walgreens making 15 bucks an hour. Did that for a pretty good amount of time and um, started getting a little depressed, you know, you know, for everyone out there listening to this, just when watching this, it's like making money is difficult. It's hard. Like unless you have money to start with or you have an opportunity or any type of skill set, I mean, it gets hard to find a way to make some money. So, you know, my uncle just saw that I was getting pretty depressed, you know, just making a minimum wage pretty much. You know, he said, why don't you go back into moving? You already do it. You, you did it with me every summer. All you need is a CDL. I was like, I don't want to do that. You know, what do movers make? T you know, $20,000 a year. You know, I was just teasing him, but I didn't, I didn't know because he never paid me. So I didn't know anything about it. I was just helping him move furniture. Well, he goes, $20,000, let me show you this shows me just one of his gross remember gross is not net so we're not here to amplify things we're not trying to say that truck drivers make a lot of money because this is very difficult time for truck drivers right now in this market for most right and so he showed me and he made twenty five thousand dollars gross on a load again not net he has to pay his driver he got not his driver but he has to pay his help pay his fuel pay his expenses pay his truck on so on but you lumpers know, people don't realize what it costs yeah, to pay lumpers to load and unload so that was one of our biggest expenses yeah so at the end of it it was almost like for five days worth of work he made like seven thousand dollars out of that 25. you're talking to a kid at that time that would make seven thousand dollars what in three and a half months so to see him make it in five days i was like I'm quitting my Walgreens job. I'm going to go back and go to school and get my CDL. So I went to get my CDL. You know, couldn't pack up for nothing. Got out. You know, he, he took me on the road with him. And he said, look, if you go on the road with me for a year and learn the ropes, you already know how to move the furniture, but you don't know how to drive the truck, you know, and you don't know how to do the paperwork, you know. And so I went with him for a year. He didn't pay me anything, but I learned. And after the end of that year, you know, he gave me his old school Pro Eagle, you know, and I drove it to his knowledge. He would say I destroyed it because the motor blew after like five months. But honestly, 
that gave me the opportunity to save up some money and then I uh, bought my first truck and then I was on my way and then fast forward now you know 10 years of driving a truck and was you know within that time honestly about year three in I was starting to get a little depressed you know you go on Facebook you go you see your friends and uh, pretty much you know you're always on the road because as bed buggers that's what we called ourselves you'd be on the road seven eight nine months straight and then take the winter seasons off that's just how it worked because a lot of families didn't move in the winter time right yeah march to october is the busy season yeah. so you got to get it while it's busy yep so i just never saw my family i never saw jenna i never you know and jenna's my wife and so pretty much i was getting depressed so three years into it about i said you i didn't have nothing to do I just start picking up a phone and start filming little things you know now the kids get into trucking now and they film everything like, oh my God, maybe I'll be a YouTuber in the trucking world. No one's probably ever done that before. And then they find out that everybody does it, right? But um, yeah, it was just a situation where got bored, filmed trucks, interviewed a guy. I could tell you actually what changed for me was I interviewed a guy that was just got out of prison, couldn't find a job. And he said he tried for almost a year and a half. A company hired him. And I was just bored. I interviewed him. I think that video got like 200 views. You know, I thought I was a superstar. And what came of it was someone actually emailed me and said, I watched that video. I myself, you know, had a past life, got out of prison, couldn't find a job for nine months, called that company up and they gave me a chance. And now I have a family. You know, and I'm doing really good because of that video. I'm telling you, um, I got hooked. I got hooked, bro. I was like, this is so cool. You can help people. I started interviewing more people. Next thing you know, 3,300 videos later, we are here today. And the channel's just evolved to everything from news, informational, just anything that Church Driver sent me. If there's enough of people sending me something, then we got to talk about it. So... You know, I'm here for the truck drivers. I'm here to give them information, give them a platform to use so that, you know, sometimes they might not feel like they have a voice. As you can see, I lost my voice. We were at Mid-America Truck Show. I gave a couple of pro talks and little things and just showing people love and, you know, we're here today. So long story, extremely long. Uh, that was <laughs> what it is really. Yeah, but it's good, though, because, you know, I, I know that you didn't mention it in this particular segment, but I know at one point in time, you guys decided to pretty much give up everything, and you and Jenna climbed out of the truck, you sold your house, yep. pretty much sold everything you had. Yep. So that was about, yeah, about so six years ago. So you could stockpile money. Yep. You know, we just said, you know what, we're going to live in a small, this little small international pro star, go trucking for a couple of years, just save everything. You know, and sometimes you know, I try to stress to people a lot too that in order to be successful in life, sometimes it takes that sacrifice that you don't want to do. Yeah. I mean, that's a hard commitment to just live in a truck for mm. a year, no home, no place to go back <laughs> to. I mean, you can always go visit family, but it's not the same as having your own place to go back to. Yeah. And there's a lot of truckers out there that do that. Yeah. And, no, and, and, and I don't think people realize how hard the life is when you're all over the road truck driver. No, I agree with you, right? And this red cup right here is just water, people. Just letting you know. You know, people will be upset, but I don't drink or smoke. You can do what you want with your life, but, you know. I'm the same way. That's just not me. Um, But, no, you're right. I mean, you know, I've, I've been blessed with the opportunity. Um, I had my partner, Jay, give me an opportunity a couple years ago. He had a great apparel company called Big Rig Tees, and he asked me to be his partner, and we've grown it to... Now we're in over 200 truck stops. I mean, these things can happen to real people. You know, I mean, it's just like, it's almost like the three, maybe four H's. One, stay healthy <laughs> because you got to be around, which I myself was working on. You know, stay hungry, stay humble, you know, and, you know, it's, it's, that's it. I mean, it's, it's all that's to it. I mean, if I could do it. I'm not going to say, oh, if I could do it, anyone could do it. But I'll tell you one thing. Sometimes you might not know what you're passionate about. You try different things and you find out what, you know, starts having less resistance and you start finding a path. And then sometimes you find a passion for that 
And when you do, you just put all your energy into that and get so good at whatever that is that more opportunities in this life will come. Because opportunities really only come when you see them. And you won't be able to see anything until you you just finite spend all your time. I spend 20 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year in the trucking industry, learning about trucking, reading about trucking, interviewing truck drivers. So at times, luck, I would say happens, but luck happens by me meeting good people, by seeing good people, by, you know, and, and I tell you this because, you know, a lot of people, right, they're always wondering, like, how do you make something like that happen for yourself? And you might feel like you don't have a talent or you don't have a skill set, but if you try a lot of different things and you see something kind of working, put a lot of energy into it, you know, don't quit everything you have to do it. But if you see that you're starting to make maybe some income doing it and it gets to the point where I would say even it's making a quarter of the income that you're making from your full time job. Maybe it's time to put 100 percent of your energy into that. You know, I, and I know you know what I'm talking about because you're on the road, you know, you're doing vendorship. I mean, you're doing all, you know. Yeah, and we absolutely love what we do. And, and I don't remember the famous philosopher who said it, but, um, you know, there's a saying that uh, if you love what you do for a living, then you never work a day in your life. And mm -hmm. I'm blessed enough that, that I absolutely love what I do for a living. So I when I wake up every morning, I get to drive big trucks and play with motorcycles. And uh, so I, I never regret it. I still have my bad days, don't get me wrong, yeah. but I never regret what I'm doing. I love it. I tell you, man, it's, it's the same, you know. I definitely don't want to be the richest guy in the graveyard. No. You know, do some stuff that makes you happy. And pretty much that's, you know, that's the life story in the nutshell, really. You know, and I've, I've, I've told my story myself. I've told it on a, a couple, you know, platforms as far as, you know, little things that people have had me on. But it is definitely different on the other side when you're, because these days I put out so much content, people don't even know I was a truck driver, you know, but it, it's it's not about me, right? That's, that's the whole concept of it. It's about the drivers for me. So I don't focus on me and my business and what I do, you know, so it's, it's, I think it's good once in a while to just let people know that there's a reason why this Asian guy just randomly wants to interview drivers you know because uh until you've lived in a truck until you've had to take showers until you were 100 miles away from home but couldn't get home because and and you missed a birthday party because of you know e-logs and regulations you know you can't really talk to anybody about what trucking is right so yeah all right so before we go all right we know you spent 10 years in a truck i mean you dedicated yeah. your life to that yeah yeah and then now the last few years, you've been really successful with this whole YouTube thing. Sure. And, and I know there's going to be some naysayers out there that you don't even drive anymore. But yeah, man, I, that's I, true. I, I don't. Yeah. And, and I'm here to say, at least you're still doing something positive for the community. I mean, there's there's more to trucking than being the guy behind the wheel. There's a whole industry that's uh, th that depends on many different angles to operate. And you're still playing a big role in that. So no, I just want to say I absolutely respect what you do. But here's the question. Yeah. When was the last time you actually drove a truck? Honestly, it was probably, probably last year. And I'm trying to think what it was. I think I just jumped in, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 Sean, his cab over. Okay. Yeah, he jumped, he came over to uh, 595 Truck Stop. Wanted me to interview him in his little cab over. And told me to drive it. And, uh. I gotta find the clip of that, but yeah. I just went and you know shifting gears a little bit, but yeah, that's probably just probably a year ago. All yeah. right, so you know many of the new viewers may not recognize, but right now we are sitting inside my truck, which yeah. we call Goliath. So yeah. what do you say we jump in the driver's seat and you take this thing for a ride around the Kentucky Exposition Center? I don't know about that. I have never let anybody drive this in the time that I've, I've had I don't, yet. I do not feel comfortable driving this. This thing is look, guys. I'll be honest with you, I'll jump into a semi truck and drive it with a trailer, but to drive a bus like this, this is different. Hey, and it'll be easy right now. I don't have the trailer on it right now, so you've only got to worry about the 48 foot truck. You don't have to worry about the 40 foot trailer. I don't know. I don't know. We might have to catch on a repeat. I'm going off of, hey, and you guys can make fun of me on this one. 
uh, I'm going off of a 30 minute sleep in the last uh, probably 37 hours. So, yeah. Next time. All right. Next time. <laughs> All right, Alex, I want to thank you for taking yeah, the time yeah. to sit down with us. Yeah. I know you're a busy guy and, yeah. uh, you know, you work really hard to do what you do. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this will help motivate other people yeah. as well. The, the, the dedication, regardless, whether it's YouTube, trucking, right. motorcycles, whatever it is, right. you just got to put the dedication yeah. to doing something you love and you can be successful. I mean, and you're a spitting image of like five years ago, you probably never thought you were going to be right here right now oh, at man. this point in life. It's, it's always like and, that. And I'm the same way with my channel, my business, it has evolved. And what I thought I was going to be 10 years ago is not where yeah. it ended up. It's, and it's a much better place than I ever anticipated. Yeah, no, that's great. So, and so we'll follow do a part, your dreams. We'll do a part two. Catch me when I'm not a zombie. And we're gonna jump around and drive this thing and run over some stuff. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that because yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be at the 75 Chrome Shop show, aren't you? Yeah. So will I. Yeah. But so I'm gonna have the trailer. It'll be a little bit more challenging. Oh my god! Hey, we'll double down. All right. <laughs> All right, Alex. Thank you, and have a good one, man. Yes, sir. Cool. Yeah, go catch it. Well, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I'm a little sad that we didn't get Alex driving Goliath. I thought that would be a really cool thing to do, but. There's always next time. We will get him driving this truck at some point. You know what? And if there's any other famous YouTube truckers out there that want to drive Goliath, I think it'll be a cool promotion. We can uh, cross homogenize or whatever. So let's do that. Reach out to me, Amzol Adam, ExtremeBikes.com. Hi, guys, and thank you for watching. Until the next time I see you, keep those engines running.